In this video, I'll answer your top five questions about playing the piano. Hi everyone, welcome to the Piano Keys. I'm so glad that you're here. My name is Marina and I help people all over the world achieve their piano goals without years of lessons. In this video, I'll be answering the top five questions I get about playing the piano. So these are the most common questions that I get and I decided to put all my thoughts at the present time into one video so that I can just make a link to it and uh, not have to answer the same questions over and over. These questions are not in any particular order, they're just the top five that I get all the time. So the first question is, what is the right fingering? Sometimes I'll have questions on my tutorial saying, you didn't use the fingering that's on my sheet music, which one is correct? Or you changed the fingering from one section to the other, which one is correct? Um, so the answer is, the only right fingering for anything that you play is the fingering that allows you to play that thing at the best of your current ability. So if your music says use finger four, but you try using finger four and it doesn't work and you try finger three and that feels really good and it allows you to play it fast or um, more expressively or whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish there, then use finger three. Uh, sometimes people will post in my Facebook group uh, piano practice tips with the piano keys and they'll show me like one chord or one section of a piece of sheet music and say okay what fingering should I use here and it's really not possible for me to answer that question without knowing what happens right before that section what happens right after that section how fast are you playing and how good are you at playing piano are you is this piece about your level or is it way beyond your ability so no matter what fingering you use it's not going to work for you right so it, context has a whole lot to do with fingering if you have a little bit of time like if you're playing something fast then your fingering might be different from if you have a lot a lot of time to play something like if it's something is slow or you have a long note or something like that so the best answer to what is the right fingering is you should do some experimentation you should definitely learn your scales and arpeggios and you should um, ask questions you know of people who are better than you like what would you do here right but no matter what anybody says as the answer the only answer is what works for you to achieve what you need to achieve I do have a video where I go through a piece and I explain how I figure out a fingering that works and it's linked over here so the second question I get is how do you know when to change the pedal or how to use the pedal in a piece of music? As you might have seen if you've looked at any amount of sheet music, most sheet music does not give you exact pedaling of everything. Sometimes you'll see pedal markings here and there, sometimes not at all. In my easy piano sheet music arrangements, I always include pedaling markings because you need a place to start, right? So um, in order to figure out how to use the pedal, you have to first have an example to follow. And that's why I do include my uh, pedaling suggestions in my easy piano sheet music. Now, if you're playing by ear or you're playing from sheet music that doesn't have pedaling marks, that's where your experience and your taste as a musician needs to come in. I have a video teaching you about how to use the pedal. It's linked here. After you watch that video, you might find that, okay, now you understand what I'm talking about, but your body isn't doing what you want it to do. So this brings up a really important thing, and that is just understanding mentally um, doesn't mean that you can tell your body what to do and it will do it. So a lot of you are adults who watch this and you have a pretty big uh, knowledge base already. And because of that, you are right in thinking that all you need to do is learn about something and you'll be able to apply it. But the problem there is that playing the piano involves so many different mental and physical processes 
that without a systemized uh, course of study, including exercises and intellectual understanding, you really can't apply the things that you learn. And that's why in my courses, I teach you through exercises that I do with you because just reading about it or watching someone else do it really doesn't help you to be able to do what you need to do. So if you've watched the pedaling tutorial and you want to know how to apply that knowledge to actually using the pedal and coordinating with your hands, I do have an entire course dedicated to leading you through exercises of um, playing and pedaling and uh, the different pedals and when you should use them and then I go through different pieces by Bach and Beethoven and I show you how to then apply your skills to figuring out where and how to pedal. So the link to that course is in the description box below this video. Another question that I get often is, why is it taking so long? So sometimes um, when I was teaching more in person, um, parents would come to me and these tended to be parents who were like engineers, you know, people who like to quantify things and they would say, okay, how long does my child need to study with you before they can play the piano? And that just opens up like a whole other <laughs> set of questions. What does it mean to play the piano? What does it mean to be good at playing the piano? So I'm going to put all those aside and just focus on the core question, which is basically asking how long does it take to do what I want to do at the piano? So there is really no answer to that because there are so many variables. Number one, what's your history with music? Okay, so do you understand anything about note reading, about theory, um, or if you played another instrument? Another is, um, how dedicated are you? Are you going to sit at a piano for you know five to ten minutes and then decide that there's something else better going on and come back a few days later? Or are you going to actually commit to ten minutes every day, whether or not you feel like it and whether or not you feel like you're making progress because sometimes it doesn't show immediately, right? It takes some time. I always use the analogy of watering a seed that you, you plant, right? So at first you won't see anything happening depending on what the plant is. It might even take months for you watering and feeding the soil and then you'll see little sprouts, right? So playing the piano is like that. You have to keep watering the soil and giving it sunlight and whatever else it needs. There's a whole lot of um, faith <laughs> that goes into being an artist, a performing artist specifically, and that is having in mind the outcome that you want, the goal that you want, finding a system to get there, and then doing what you need to do, following that system and having faith that it's going to pay off. And this isn't like faith, like, oh, you know, like a hope. You've seen other people do it. You know, other people can play the piano. And if the person that you're learning from plays the piano in a way that you want to play, and they say, look, here is how you can do what I do, then you know that following those steps will lead you to where you want to go. It's like people who uh, climb very tall mountains and they hire Sherpas, you know, the people who understand how to get up that mountain and what it takes and all the stuff that they need, right? So it's very similar to learning the piano. You wanna hire a Sherpa or, you know, learn from a teacher that is taking you where you wanna go and they know how to lead you there. So if it's taking you longer to learn a piece than you think that it should, you want to take a look at what you're doing. Are you learning from someone that you trust, that you admire? If you're learning on your own, you might be missing key pieces of the puzzle. So you might want to seek out a teacher or you know someone on YouTube that is good, that knows how to teach and that knows how to play. You might be playing a piece that is way above your abilities. So again, playing the piano involves lots of neural processes that need to happen. And these neural pathways are built over time and over a systemized uh, course of study. So you can't just say like, oh, I really want to play uh, Beethoven's uh, Moonlight Sonata third movement. Show me how to play the notes and I'll get there. You won't if that is like one of your first pieces because your body doesn't know how to move in that way but also your mind doesn't know how to process 
that kind of musical information. So you also want to learn some theory. Um, I have a free chord book that you can get. It's linked below. And also a three video series on chords linked to it here. So why would you want to learn about chords? Well, what you're doing is you're preparing your musical mind to uh, be able to understand and retain information quicker and easier so that it, it's like learning a language, right? So imagine if you're learning uh, English and English is not your first language. It's a brand new language to you and you've learned how to read the letters. You've even learned how to put some of the letters together in small words like cat or dog. Um, and then you say, okay, I get it. I understand like these are the letters and these are the sounds. Now give me some Shakespeare to read. Well, <laughs> you're gonna have a bit of a hard time, especially if you're trying to memorize it and act it out, which is basically what music is, right? You're acting, you're memorizing and you're acting. You might not memorize a complete piece, but your body has to learn those movements in a certain order. So in a way it is memorizing. So basically what you did when you were learning English and learned the word cat and then tried to you know, do a Shakespeare play is you skipped a whole <laughs> lot of stuff in between. And you'll probably get frustrated and you know you won't you won't know the words that you're saying you won't understand and all that so that's what happens uh, a lot with adults they want to save time and so they might um, learn like through flashcards or something like that or you know easy pieces how to read the notes on the staff and then immediately they want to jump into like the pieces that they love it just really doesn't work that way and what ends up happening is you build up really bad technique habits and then um, you might get frustrated and for sure you're not going to reach your full potential. Okay, so this leads to our fourth question which is how can I play fast? Which is also kind of tied into this other question which is um, why does it hurt when I play? Why do my hands feel stiff? Um, why are my scales inside the pieces that I'm playing? Why are they uneven? All of, the, all of these things are basically asking the same question, which is about technique. So imagine if I get a basketball and I learn how to dribble it and I learn how to walk and dribble and I learn how to make different kinds of shots, right? And sometimes I get it in the basket, sometimes I don't, but I feel pretty comfortable with the ball. Okay, then, I jump into a, a game, a pickup game that's all NBA players. What's gonna happen? Well, they've been practicing their whole lives and on a certain level, right? And they can, you know, I, I'm not even in the same like world as they are in basketball, right? Why? Well, I haven't developed the physical abilities that they have. I don't understand the game as well as they do, you know, my body doesn't feel at home the way that theirs does, right? And they're constantly working on their technique, right? They're, the way that they play the game, they're exercising, all that stuff. So what happens is, uh, you know, again, especially adults, they'll, uh, learn some scales or whatever and then they'll try to apply it to learning an advanced piece so that's like me knowing how to dribble a ball and then jumping into a game with NBA players my body's not ready my mind's not ready so what you have to do is teach your body and your brain how to move around the keyboard or the piano in a way that doesn't hurt you in a way that uses the mechanics of the body correctly and in a way that builds up your strength and your speed and your agility and your hand independence and your finger independence. So I actually made courses to help you do this, become a piano superhero. And if you're in the piano practice tips uh, group, then go ahead and ask uh, there. A lot of the people in that group have taken the course or are taking the course and they will tell you what they've experienced. So. I can tell you that uh, everybody who's done the course has definitely upped their game in piano and they're able to play better, longer, faster, you know, all the stuff that you want to do at the piano, it doesn't just come by 
intellectual understanding as I said before your body has to learn processes and you can't jump from one level to to another um, and skip things and still have it all fit together okay it's a physical ability that needs to be built up and the last question I'm going to talk about today is this why is it that when I play by myself at home you know nobody watching I can play perfectly and then as soon as I know somebody's watching even if it's just like my phone recording me because I know I'm gonna post it to a group or something as soon as that happens I fall apart I make mistakes I get nervous my hands start to shake I forget everything that I've done what's wrong with me <laughs> uh, the answer is nothing's wrong with you that I know of <laughs> The answer is, the answer is, and there's nothing wrong with you. We all experience this. I actually made a video about stage fright. I'll link to it over here. And um, so when you're playing by yourself, the stakes are very low. You can play as many times as you want. If you make a mistake, nobody's going to know about it except you, which then helps you to relax so you don't make as many mistakes. Um, there's no there's no pressure right but then as soon as someone is watching you get one shot at it uh, that's what you think you get one shot and if you make a mistake then um, blah 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 like you, in your mind you have all these things that might happen you'll be embarrassed you'll show yourself that all your work was for nothing you know you've wasted your time who knows a bunch of things can go through your mind right and so all of this experience happens kind of in your subconscious. It might you might be conscious of it, but it happens like in a like a back process. As you're trying to play, your brain is is thinking about all these other things, right? And your hormones are surging and you got, you know, all of these, these things are happening. And so no wonder you make mistakes. It's totally normal. So um, I want you to watch the video here about stage fright because it gives you a lot of uh, things that you can do to help with that. But I just want you to know that it's totally normal. Even the most famous professional musicians make mistakes on pieces they've been playing, you know, for 50 years or singing for 50 years or whatever. It's normal. It's, it happens. You're human. It's okay. Don't worry about it. The point of music is not to play it perfectly. If the point of music was to play it perfectly, then we could just, you know, program into a computer every piece, every song that we want to hear, and that's it. Nobody ever has to play it again, right? Because we could just listen to those recordings. Or even if you're playing live, you could, you know, have a pre-recorded thing happening while you pretend to play. So the point isn't to play perfectly with all the right notes and everything. So the point of music is to convey and to experience emotion. So music is the language of emotions. So if you think about it in that way and just kind of, um, you know, practice what you need to practice. Obviously you want to be prepared, but every time that you play, Imagine that you're experiencing that music for the first time and just really like be in it and and think about what the composer is trying to say with that music, what you're bringing to it as a performer, and maybe even, you know, what effect you want to have on your audience. So imagine if you're singing a lullaby to your child or to a child who is falling asleep. You would think of it in a certain way and you would make your voice, you know, quiet and soothing and so what if you didn't remember all the words or you change some of the um, notes of the lullaby? You want the effect to be that this child is soothed and, you know, drifts to sleep in a peaceful way, right? So think about if you're playing Moonlight Sonata, the first movement for people, you know, what kind of... Uh, mood do you want to set right and then if you make some mistakes you make some mistakes it's not the end of the world people will move on and forget about it um, so so again you want to practice and learn as well as you can but the point of a musical performance is to convey emotion and to have an experience
Okay, so that's it for now. Let me know if you have any questions. Click the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and share it with somebody who might uh, enjoy it or appreciate it. If you want to support the work that I do and my channel, I do have a PayPal link below, lots of links below um, this video. And you can join my private Facebook group, Piano Practice Tips with the Piano Keys. I have a Facebook page where I post updates, the piano keys. Sometimes I post to Instagram, the piano keys TPK. And my website has a million ways to help you get better at piano and enjoy it more, thepianokeys.com. Keep practicing, have fun, and I will see you soon. Bye.